Hello and blessings beautiful souls, Sadava and I share to you. How are you today? It's a bit of a farm day, I must admit. We are out clearing a walking track throughout our 28 acre property and it's windy and it's cold, but we are getting it done, which is exciting. So that aside, I wanted to talk a little bit about a subject that was raised this week in one of this week's vlogs and that was a new spirit guide and I had a few people reach out to me on YouTube and also on Facebook and a few other you know ways like my email and all that asking me what is the best way to get in touch with your spirit guide and how is it that you interact with your spirit guide well let me touch it catch up my breath Firstly, I wanted to say that when I interact with my spirit guides, I close my eyes and I see them and I hear them. And that is how I interact with them. I see them and I hear them. There are other people who experience their spirit guides in a myriad of different ways. And a lot of those ways have things to do with your clairs. Now, I recently did a video on the clairs and I will link that video um, in the card section at the top there. Uh, but in many cases, how you experience your clairs is also how you experience your spirit guides. There are so many red robins and little fairy wrens in this area. They're just sort of following us at the moment, which is really nice. Anyway, I wanted to further elaborate by saying that if you want to start to really reach out to your spirit guides and try to communicate with them, then one of my top tips for you is to activate your third eye. Now, the concept of the third eye is of Hindu origin and it is associated with the Hindu chakra or Nadi system. And so learning about the seven primary chakra points can be of benefit to you. And that's just another little tip. Uh, understanding exactly the function of each of the chakras will also assist you in better calibrating your chakras and ensuring that they are in perfect alignment as you begin these types of more intense spiritual or intuitive activities. So with that in mind, once you have become accustomed to the myth, to the kookaburra they're great iconic Australian birds as I was saying once you become accustomed to your third eye its properties its strengths its weaknesses things of that nature you can move on to this next step now before I move on to this next step I just wanted to say to you that yes you can go online and find out information about the chakra systems and all that sort of stuff but nothing really replaces expert information and there are a lot of sacred texts out there on the subject of the chakra systems in which I would highly recommend you have at least a peruse of so that you get the full context of what a chakra is how a chakra works works the synergy between chakras the fact that there are more than just the seven primary chakras and so on and so forth there is a little bit of information to absorb and it pays to do that type of work like it, it's very beneficial the payoff is good for you if you do that type of work so just make sure that you go beyond just your standard like you know glyphs and and images that you find on the internet and there's nothing wrong with those they serve as great reminders when you've already got the information in your mind but to specifically learn directly from it's not quite enough and that's just my own personal opinion right so now on to the tip and that is to work with three maybe even four stones that I have found to be incredibly beneficial when working on activating or enhancing or strengthening or healing or recalibrating my third eye I know that was convoluted these stones are lapis lazuli or lapis lazuli as some people call it um, there is also iolite blue kyanite and what is the last one called labradorite yes so these stones if placed carefully on the third eye they can help to open up that third eye to enhance to recalibrate to do all the things that i've previously mentioned now not everyone is going to react well to the stones that i have mentioned and so it pays to mention that there are many many other stones that are associated to the third eye and it's important to find one that really works well for you that you feel comfortable working with and that doesn't sort of make you feel uncomfortable the placement of that stone will go on 
your brow bone or between your brow bone, which is the physical location of the third eye. It can't be too heavy. It can't be too round. It has to be kind of perfect for this. So small and somewhat flat to be able to place on the third eye while you're laying down. I apologize for that. That was my son. He's very excited today. It's the last day of school holidays here. One of my other tips that I have for you is to utilize essential oils or magical oils. Now there is, yes, a difference between essential and magical oils. And I will leave that up for you to discover, unless of course you would like me to cover the differences in another video. But for now, there is a difference. And so certain magical oils are brilliant for opening up the third eye, especially if you can find someone who can make a beautiful intuition oil, something with a little lemongrass in it, something with a little mugwort in it, and a few other little bits and pieces, and perhaps the placement of some of the stones that I've previously mentioned in a really nice carrier oil. And, you know, add things to that, basically. There are many ways to do this. You can make it yourself, or you can go to a person, an individual who specializes in this kind of thing, and you can have one made for you. Now, a little dab of intuition oil, and then the crystal on top, absolutely beautiful. If you wanna take that a next step further, you can actually line your outer uh, crown, we will call it, in intuition stones as well, creating somewhat of a crystal grid around your upper, your crown chakra and your third eye. And so it takes a little bit of extra effort and it's really for those who are feeling quite stuck. If you're feeling quite stuck and you can't bridge that gap between you and your uh, spirit guide and it's just difficult, you know that you're on the cusp of it, you might just need to like kick it up a notch and that to me would be kicking it up a notch. Mantras are another way of helping to open up that third eye and uh, finding clarity. Now the reason why I'm speaking so much about opening up the third eye because that is opening up your psychic senses and when we communicate with our spirit guides we need to be very strong in our psychic senses and so depending on what Claire you are as previously mentioned the way in which you communicate with your uh, spirit guide is going to be different but they will come to you when you are open to it and many people think, oh, I'm open to it, I'm open to it. But there is still so much resistance and it could be very shadowy resistance, resistance that you don't know is actually there. And so doing a little shadow work and being very supported as you do that shadow work, not just willy nilly getting out there and following kind of methods that you see on the internet, really find your way of engaging in a little shadow to help to clear any debris that has uh, been in place for some time and you may not have known because that will help to open up those channels of communication as well. Now a lot of what I'm saying in this video takes a little bit of work and I acknowledge that when it comes to these types of spiritual gifts or these spiritual practices or whatever it is that you would like to call it you do have to do the work. Some people are born ready and there's nothing wrong with that and some people take some time to prepare. Now, if you are in a hurry for whatever reason, if you really like to know now, if you really like to connect with your spirit guides, with a deity, if you would like to open up those channels of communication, then I do offer a service on my Etsy store called Spirit Work, connecting you with matron, patron or spirit guide. And so that is an option. And there are other people that offer similar services and you can go to one of these people and they can help you to connect to a spirit guide, to a deity, in some capacity is one of the most popular reading slash uh, spirit work sessions on my etsy store and i love doing them and i can honestly say that each and every time i do them they are such an incredible and life-changing type of reading or service or experience to gift to another person and it really does help for those who are feeling very stuck and very ready simultaneously. But what I would say to you is even if you go to a person like myself to have one of these types of services done, it still pays to go back and continuously do the work so that you yourself can experience that open channel of communication with your guides, guardians and ancestors in your own way. That is the ultimate goal, to be autonomous in this practice. And so by doing the work, not just what I have outlined, but also researching to find other ways in which you can open yourself up psychically to do the work will be of tremendous benefit to you down the track. Okay, so there you have it. Okay, so I am absolutely starving and I'm going to have to go because 
I have been at it. I have been doing chopping and clearing and oh gosh, so much stuff all the way out into the into the wild bush in the background there, as you can see. Yeah, um, heavy work, my arms are sore and I am hungry. So I'm going to end this vlog today right here by saying thank you for sharing this sacred space with me. As per usual, I hope that I have been able to give you some ideas uh, and something of value for you in your practice. And please know that there are many, many ways in which you can open up your channels of communication to better access information, to see and interact with your spirit guides. There is never just one way. What I have shared with you in this vlog are just some very simple tips and tricks, easy, accessible, doable, and you can begin that work right now if that is what interests you. So with all of that said and done, I'm wishing you so much love, luck, peace, and joy. Thank you for spending this time with me, and I will be speaking to you tomorrow. If you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like share it around subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and make sure to comment below if you have any tips or tricks on connecting and really interacting with your spirit guides with your guardians with your ancestors or well, please do share that in the comments below bye